Hello everybody and welcome back to Firefield Junction and welcome to another DCC fitting video. Um, as you'll probably know in the last video we looked at the uh, very nice uh, Batman Class 159 in Southwest train delivery. However in this video we are going to be uh, DCC DCCing this particular unit because it's a non-DCC ready locomotive so for some people it might be quite difficult to do a model like this. However I've done several models like this in the past and I'm used to models with this sort of tooling so I know what I'm doing. Well, I don't want to sound too sort of sluggish there, but yeah, I I, I know what I'm doing with models like this, so we should be fine. So we'll so um we'll do this video in two parts. Uh, so in this video, we'll focus on uh, doing the motor units, which I've got here in front of me. Then in, in the next video, we'll focus on doing uh, the end units. Um, I'll only do one of the end units in the video because they're exactly the same. So you, so if you once you've done one of them, you can easily just transfer the skills from that one to do the other one because they're exactly the same. But anyway, in this video, we are going to be doing the motor units, which we've got here in front of us. Um, I'll quickly just uh, to just put this out there just to ignore that some of the couplings are missing. As you can see, there's a coupling on this end, but there isn't one on this end. Um, I was uh, Before this video, I was sort of halfway through in the process of changing the couplings over to the uh, couplings that I mentioned during the review. If I just grab one of the end units, uh, you can see uh, that it's got one of the uh, Batman sort of close uh, coach couplings fitted to it. Um, because I like using these sort of units with these sort with these kinds of DMUs because I find I think they just look a bit better. Uh, they uh, make the uh, units close cup a uh, couple closer together, and it means there's no awkward sort of uh, mo movement between the units. So if you say the units on the track, you don't get any sort of this sort of motion which you get with the standard couplings. So that's why I like using them, and I was just halfway sort of changing them. Uh, plus, <laughs> when I was actually changing uh, the couplings over on this particular unit. Uh, the bogey frame decided to come off and one of the pickup wires came off as well so I ended up fixing that and then just didn't bother uh, putting the new coupling in. But anyway, enough of that, we'll put that out of the way. Let's get the body off and we'll see how, what she's like inside at the moment. And now usually what you do is you take out a screw at this end and this end of the unit and then you'd unclip the body. However, as I mentioned in the review, both of the, sort of, uh, the lugs that the, screw, that the body screws go into on this unit uh, both those lugs have snapped so the body screws are useless now on this model so there's no point having them in so the body is just clipped on now normally so it's quite easy to take off you just very gently pry the body away from the chassis don't want to pry it too much because we don't want to damage it just gently pry it away and then it should fairly easily just come off there we go and then the body very nicely comes off like that so now we can see what she's like inside and i will just show you You've, if I hold it up to the camera, you probably can see there, that's where the screw is supposed to go into, but you can see that um, half it has snapped off, and it's the very same on the other end there. As you can see, the screw lug has snapped. Luckily, it's a good job that this body also clips off, because otherwise we'd probably be a bit screwed. <laughs> but if we just put the body to one side, we can now see what she's like as a DC, as a DC, lug, as a DC model. Now, usually what you'd expect when, when opening up a model like this, whether it's um, this one or the Batman Class 158, which is, well, I suppose, obviously on this one you then have the lighting board in one end, but a model like this, the 158 or the 166, um, which is just behind me, as you can probably just see there, all of the models like this, you have the typical motor in the centre, and then you've got the relevant wires, but usually at either one end, and you can see sort of the logs on top of where the bogies mount to, there's uh, two uh, sort of sections here that help, uh, here and here, that you can see. Um, usually what you'd have on top of one of those ends is you'd have a small circuit board, and you'd have, and then you have some sort of, maybe some resistors, maybe some capacitors, some capacitors in there as well, something like stuff like that, maybe a resistor, or something like that. And basically, and basically all your wires will come from the pickups, you'll have wires coming from the motor as well, and they all go into that circuit board at one end. Now on this particular one, it looks like that circuit board was removed at some point in its previous life. So now the wires just come straight from the pickups and they just go straight into the motor. So so you don't, don't be worried, so don't be a bit worried if maybe you're opening up your model and it looks like you're different to this. If your model does have the circuit board still fitted, don't worry, it's perfectly fine. All you need to do is just uh, remove that circuit board so you then just got the relevant wires. Now, the, um, I've mentioned this um, in previous videos as well, is that when you're DCCing a model, there's sort of two different ways you can do it. You can either 
hardwiring hardwire in an 8 pin socket which is what I'm going to be doing and I only do it on on uh, units like this where it's got the motor in it for the end units I won't use an 8 pin socket I'll just be hard running the ship in directly but with these particular units in the centre units I like to either you can either use um, an 8 pin socket which is what I like to do or you could just not bother with the 8 pin socket and just take the chip and if it's got an 8, um, a eight pin socket on it just cut the 8 pin plug off and just hard wire the relevant wires in and you can just do it that way but I, but I prefer using um, 8 pin sockets because it makes things a bit easier this model this particular model like most of my models will be receiving a sound coder in the future and that will probably be uh, that will be a separate video sometime in the future where I'll show you uh, fitting me fitting sounds to this particular model but, but yeah I just prefer using the 8 pin sockets because I don't, I don't really want to go taking sort of a £120 sound coder and then cutting the 8 pin socket off I just don't really want to be doing that, so I just prefer hard wiring in an 8 pin socket to make the model DCC ready, and then just taking the decoder, and then just plugging the decoder in. So then it's then if you ever, because then one of the positives of that um, I find is then if at some point in the future you decide you want to change the ship over, or you maybe just want to have, want or you want to run the model on DC, all you have to do is take the chip out and then plug the new plug the new chip in, or you can just take the chip out and then just stick in an 8 pin blanking plate and there you go the model's back to DC again but obviously in this video like I usually do I'll be taking the 8 pin socket and then I'll just be plugging the chip into it so as we can see at the moment we've got wires coming from both bogies on either side of the bogies and then going directly into the motor now what we need to do is since uh, since well, at least at least on one end of the model the wires are color coded what we'll be doing is we'll be desoldering the wires from the motor. If I just hold, hold it up to the camera, you can see we've got a red wire here and a black wire here coming in. Um, I think this this wire probably should be red, uh, but it's not, but that'll be fine. And what we'll do is we'll desolder the pickup wires from the motor on both sides. And what we'll do, the red wire from the pin socket will solder to these two wires here and here. The black wire from the pin socket will go to the two other bottom wires here. And then the orange wire for the decoder will go to this side of the motor and then the grey wire will go to this side of the motor so i hope that makes sense um if if, it, if if at any point in this video there's something you don't understand just feel free to drop a comment below if there's something you don't understand or you just want to ask some sort of question about dccing a model or something feel free to just drop a comment and get in contact with me and i'll happily help you um, because obviously dccing um, a non-DCC ready model can be quite daunting for a lot of people. Uh, for a lot of people, but anyway, let's get the 8-pin sockets uh, fitted, get the chip fitted, and we'll get it running. So I see you in a second. <laughs> So the 8-pin socket's been wired in, all the relevant wires have been wired up correctly and just using some bits of electrical tape I've just bundled the wires together and just secured everything uh, not fairly, well I'm not saying not incredibly neatly but fairly neatly on top of the motor here just, just so it's all out the way so it's not all over the place and we can see we've just got the 8-pin socket here and then just to recap so that both pick up, both pick up wires from this from this side from this side and this side so this red wire this red wire that's here then the black wire that comes up from this side they've gone to the red wire on the 8-pin sockets and the pickup wires from this side and this side have gone to the black wire on the 8-pin sockets then if I just spin it over we should be able to see there the orange wire from the 8-pin sockets going to this side of the motor then the grey wire from the 8-pin sockets going to this side of the motor so the next thing to do is to grab the 8-pin chip I've got one of the uh, lens uh, chips here. This this is the is the standard plus uh, V2, as you can see just there. So if we just open the box, if I can, there we go. And if we just nice and gently take the chip out, there we go. We'll just leave the instructions and everything in there for the moment. And then we just need to plug the chip into the 8-pin socket, so it needs to go this way round. So all the relevant wires match up. Just gently 
press it in, there we go. And then what we can do is if we just, what we can do is we, if we can just put uh, some double-sided sticky tape on there, uh, well, yes, and does not well, a double-sided sticky pad, we can just secure the chip nicely in place, because the wires on this are actually, are actually quite thick. Uh, so what we'll do is if we just try and keep the chip in inside the model for now. Okay, well, we'll try and do it. Try and do it over. Uh, well, just try. We'll just try and keep it inside the model for now. Or we will try and or we will try and secure it actually. If we try and secure it on top of there actually, that should be fine. So if we just grab a double a double sided sticky pad from over here, and if we just put that on top of there, and then we can just grab the chip and just secure it on top of there. Excuse the noises from outside. There we go. Okay, there we go. So the chip's nicely secured and the body should go back on without an issue there. So next thing to do is to test her. So we just put it on the track. There we go. If I just move you down, actually if I just move you around here. There we go. There we are, so hopefully you can see that. Now she should be number three, and hopefully the lamp's getting power, it should be. So let's give her a wiggle and see if she works. Oh, she does, and that's very smooth as well, actually. That's beautiful. That's much smoother than I was expecting it to be, actually. Very nice, let's try and get her going as slow as she possibly can. There we go. That's the slowest you'll go at the moment. But yeah, that's really good. So overall, I think we can say that was very successful. So the next thing to do will be to do the end units. So that'll be the next video. So thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you guys in part two, and we'll get the end, unit, end units hardwired. And then we'll come back, get everything, get the whole unit coupled back together, and get it running around the layouts. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.